Hey guys, Sage here with Dirt Time Adventures and today we're going to be looking at the fourth principle of the six principles of survival which is to minimize dehydration. So stick with me. So the Sigma standard is making really quick work of these spikes and what I'm actually trying to do is make more of a primitive style rocket stove with just some green sticks and uh, some other burning materials to be able to focus all the heat upward to boil my water. And so looking at water procurement and minimizing dehydration, understanding that a good water source is vital to your survival needs. Without water, you die. Simple as that. You can go three hours with extreme exposure, but you can literally go three days without water. And in most cases, that's a far stretch. If you're putting out tons of energy, burning calories, then you are going to be burning through your water reserves much quicker, and you're probably going to go through your water reserve and be out within about 24 to 48 hours. So keeping that in mind, water has to be one of your number one priorities. Finding a good clean water source is also just as important. You do not want to be drinking any type of contaminated water. Find something that is clear as possible and as you can hear in the background, running water. It's so important to have running water because it keeps everything from, uh, from building up like bacteria. So a lot of times bacteria grows in stagnant, idle, nasty water. And so keeping in mind that the human body is made up of 62% water and it is important because that is like the uh, radiator fluid, the, uh, the fluid that keeps your body from overheating and helps your body regu regulate your core body temperature. Keeping that in mind, the, the human body also requires on average, you know, two liters of water a day. Those two liters are simply to help meet your basic needs from sweating, perspirating, same thing, but uh, uh, breathing, your respiration, you breathe out moisture out of your mouth, and then also urination. So you got perspiration, respiration, and urination. All three are constantly pulling water out of your body. So that's why it's so important that you are constantly putting that water back in. And if you keep that in mind and realize that two liters alone of water is what you're using, and that's just a rough estimate, um, you know, 2.8 liter, 2.6 liters, 3.2 liters is what they're saying you burn through on an active day. But the thing is, is you need to be putting in, in a survival situation, at least one gallon of water per day. And so what that means is you have to have a readily available water source and a readily quick available way of treating that water that is sustainable. That is the key, sustainability. Otherwise you're just burning unnecessary calories to be able to put water back in you and you're burning through your water reserves quicker than you're putting it in. So you've probably seen on the ground back here but I came across this old Gatorade bottle. Human refuse is amazing when it comes to survival resources. Now I hate it for a conservation aspect and being eco-friendly, but in a survival situation, this will greatly increase your odds. So a couple quick, easy ways to treat your waters. I wanna talk about five ways to treat your water, and then I wanna talk about the five primary water hazards. So one of the best and easiest ways that requires the littlest amount of effort is through a process called UV, ultraviolet. And all you gotta do is find you a clear bottle with a clear water source, fill it up and set it out in the sun. You're gonna need to leave it for about four hours. You're really wanting to try to hit those critical temperatures anywhere from 90 to 120 degrees for a constant four hours. After that, the UV rays have hit in the bottle and have helped neutralize a lot of the water hazards. Once again, it's not going to treat them all because you have to realize that water treatment and water procurement and processing 
is not about removing all contaminants. It's about reducing and minimizing the hazards. Another method if you were to find some human refuse, I've also done this with bamboo, but also to make a charcoal filter. This, all it is, is the bottle bottom is cut off at the top, and we have charcoal, a sand layer, a gravel layer, or in between the gravel and sand layer is a grass layer, and all you're trying to do is to reduce the flow of the water by using the cap. You can twist it and untwist it, and as the water processes through, it's going to reduce the amount of contaminants that are in this water. So we have UV and we have the filter. And once again, what's happening here is the charcoal is a carbon base. And whenever you process your water through it, the carbon particles will cling to the water hazards. And because when you ingest the water, your body cannot absorb the carbon, then it will just process out through the process of elimination. And it'll take all the water hazards with it as you process it. After you have UV, and filter then you have good old-fashioned boiling which what I want to do is take you through a quick process on how you can boil some water with four simple sticks and a little fire and process out some water real quick and boil it off after you have boiling then you have chemical water treatment methods where you use different iodine tablets or catadine tablets or some type of chlorine or bleach um, plan on posting a blog about this process and the six principle and I'll put in a bleach ratio or a chlorine ratio to water to help you treat your water on that blog post. The fifth process of taking care of and treating your water is through the distillation process. And this is a little more challenging process to do in a survival situation but it is possible. So I tried collecting water from the surface. Once again, it is flowing water, so you're not going to get the full benefits of UV. But anytime you harvest your water, you want to try to harvest it from the surface facing away downstream so the stream's not flowing debris into it. But taking it from the surface, you're going to get the benefits of the UV. But once you get your filter full of water, you see the different water layers in it. Got the gravel the grass, sand, and charcoal. You want a one drop to four second ratio. So one, two, three, four. There's one, two, three, four. So we are right at about a one to four second drop ratio on the filter. And uh, once again, this here is a quick, easy way to filter your water and it will process up to anywhere from 100 to 1,000 gallons. And so definitely keep in mind this quick, easy method when treating water. Just like anything though, you're gonna to wanna to pour off the first batch because it's probably gonna have a little bit more charcoal sediment in it. But after that, you're good to go. Commercial filters are also an excellent option for your survival gear. Uh, putting something as simple as a Sawyer Mini or a Sawyer Squeeze into your kit could save your life. So highly encourage you pick up one of these amazing little Sawyer filters. We sell them on our website, survivalgear.us. Um, and you just cannot beat it when you consider the amount of space it takes up. It rolls up to the size of, you know, a little bigger than a 50 cent piece roll of coins. And so uh, something like this is a, an amazing survival tool to have. So another option is to do what I'm doing over here and actually dig a coyote well. Seep well, go about three feet away from the water table and that's at a minimum. You want to go 
anywhere from three to five feet, dig down to the water table. It may not look pretty, but it's much cleaner than drinking straight from your water source. This has over three feet of sedimentary layers that are filtering through each of the particles of water. So with this all natural rocket stove, I pretty much have driven four green wood stakes into the ground and just put some sand around the base to help support them. I'm going to be boiling in my Sigma 3 clean canteen today and I've collected some river birch while I was out today on the creek side and uh, I'm going to pretty much shove that down into the gaps of my setup here. And this is going to burn at a really high rate. But I want to make sure my bottle is still going to fit on the top. If I need to, I can drive any of the sticks that are sticking out too much. Drive it down a little bit more. And then I can always pack in the sand back around it where I need it. So I'm going to be doing several different layers on this natural rocket stove. Shoving cedar bark down for my first layer. Then I'm going to put, or not cedar bark, but birch bark down for my first layer. Followed by cedar bark. Followed by a bunch of small twigs and branches. And that combined, all the heat's going to rise up and focus that heat at the bottom of my canteen, making it a super efficient way to boil water. Creating a little hole here to shove in my actual tender bundle. I'm going to be using the Sigma 3 ferro rod. Prepping my tender bundle. Once again, this ain't necessarily a primitive technique, but it's definitely an all natural, um, besides the canteen, um, rocket stove. So get some of the coating off. Let's shoot for one strike. It's going to be a two striker. That's all right. Try not to smother it. Now we're going to begin to let that feed up into our rocket stove. So I got my canteen full. Gonna go ahead and add some of these amazing mints that I found. They're a little wilted after I washed them off. But mints are packed with tons of volatile oils which will also help neutralize any of the toxins in your water. Now with this technique, you do have to make some adjustments as it begins to burn because some of the stuff will fall down, shove new pieces in. But what it, once again, the key to it is that all the heat is focused in one central spot, heating up your, you know, your canteen twice as fast. So it is extremely effective. I think it does work better on ground instead of sand. 
the sand seems to give too much so I had to do some adjustments on it but uh, she's going good now every once in a while break some more twigs and shove some twigs in there to keep it going so she's pretty much boiling now um, she probably could use just a tad bit longer I like to get my water just a little past a boil to a rolling boil so uh, I'm gonna give it a few more minutes um, it's been on there about five or six minutes now and making adjustments as need be feeding the fire but uh, now I want to talk about the five primary water hazards. The first one that we have are parasites in the water. There are primarily a couple different types, but anything from hookworms to tapeworms and things like that are going to be the parasites that we find in our water sources. Uh, other options are our viruses. This could be everything from hepatitis and different things like that. Then we have our protozoas or microorganisms like our cryptosporidium and our giardia and then we have our bacterias which are our salmonellas, cholera and different things like that that are bacterial based. Also the fifth water you know hazard that we deal with are chemicals, metals and additives. This can be everything from mercury to chloride to high levels of iron. Um, there's a bunch of different things that could be in our water as far as waste runoff and dumps as well so keep those five water hazards in mind once again I can't emphasize enough about how important water is and especially when you go out on your trips make sure that you carry adequate supplies of water and make sure you have uh, some be some means of treating water whether it be filter UV um, whether it be through chemical through distillation um, any of those different methods filtering boiling um, make sure you have multiple ways to treat your water and once again always boiling is your safest option now there's a lot of debate about how long you should boil but I typically boil my water for about one minute that way I'm on the safe side I've pretty much uh, made sure that I got a consistent temperature I like to get about 120 um, or 140 on my heat and getting a good rolling boil going and if I can get that going constantly for one minute I know my water is safe to drink added with the volta oils from the mint and i'm going to be superb so guys thanks for checking out my water procurement video and the number four of the six principles of survival minimizing dehydration hopefully you picked up a few tips along the way and uh, i'm going to take this off the old uh, natural rocket stove here set it in the water the base of the water do it slowly and cool it down and uh, get myself some water